Hey, this is Rob Lunsbach, and welcome back to another edition of E-Heroes. This is episode 222. Wow, we're getting up there. And my guest today, her name's Kim Reynolds, and we're going to talk about digital advertising. You know, the, the whole Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, the whole gamut. And we might even talk about other stuff. So welcome, Kim, and thanks for being here. Well, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. You know, off air, we talked about TikTok and 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 I had this well I had this love hate relationship with TikTok and LinkedIn, but you know I I said for for years I was never going to get on TikTok. I mean I was I was adamant. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know one day someone said you know Rob you don't have to just dance and point at stuff. And you can actually recycle your old videos from YouTube and put them over there. Mm -hmm. And I did, and I started getting a little bit of traffic, and I I occasionally get a phone call, and and then one day someone said hey Rob love your stuff on TikTok. Let's do business. I thought, wow. Nice. Okay. I've only been on here for about a month and I've already picked up a client. But, you know, I, I think that we, we, like you said, you know, we can't be everywhere. We can't right. be on all these networks. I do have a system. I use Social B. And if anybody's, you know, wants to use a product like that, give me a call. I'll, I'll, I'll help guide you through it. But what it does is basically I put all my content on there and I can tell it where to schedule stuff. Mm -hmm. so I don't have to be in front of the computer all the time. Uh, and, and it just in, integrated with TikTok. But oh, that's nice. One of the things that, that I think drove me a little crazy early on was Facebook advertising. And you are like <laughs> the, the queen of Facebook advertising. Uh, what, so what don't you like about it? What uh, makes you craziest? Mark Zuckerberg, I don't really like him. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, with with Google, I can dial down to the exact demographic that I want. If I if I say, you know, this is these are the type of things that I I want to go after. Google, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Google Ads is very good at, at at doing that. Try to do that with Facebook, and you're like, the, you can't you can't get that same demographic uh, dial down as you can some of the other places well facebook works, works differently you know than google and one thing that they've really been stressing lately is going broad really broad like almost no targeting kind of broad and that's freaked a lot of people out because they're you know, it seems like Facebook's taking away all control mm -hmm. and they want they want to have do it all and but it you know, it really does work if you know a couple tricks to do and if you uh, can grab people's attention because they don't have buyer's intent on Facebook. Mm -hmm. It's interruption marketing, period. Right. And so you really, it's really, the graphics are really important to be able to just grab someone's attention, stop the scroll. And then maybe if you're lucky, they might read your headline or a couple lines of text. And hopefully that's going to be enough to hook them to click over and but yeah. I can see, I, I, I too have a love-hate relationship with Facebook. I, I love the advertising aspect of it, but the social aspect of Facebook, yeah. not so much. Right. And, and uh, you know, it just seems like every time, you now, as of this recording, uh, it's October, um, and, and you, people on, on YouTube will get to see this right away. People on audio probably won't, won't listen to this until January. Okay. Um. But here's the thing is that we're getting into now that the political arena uh, in the United States and, and Facebook starts dialing back on some of the ads and same kind of Google does the same thing. They'll come out with these warnings. Hey, you got to do this, this and this. Mm -hmm. And it's like, just let me run the ad. I mean, I've already gone through all this bull crap, but all you see right now is just political garbage. And, yeah. and, and I think it, it drives people insane. It does. It does. I don't like the political side of it at all. Um, I would rather seek out the information than have it blasted in front of me constantly. And so I'm not looking forward to the next few months. <laughs> no, I, it's every time I go to YouTube, I, I got to go through political ads and I'm like, I just want to watch one video. Just one video. But, you learn how to cook a steak. That's right. <laughs> I'm, I'm hungry now. I'm not, I don't want to listen to your political stuff, but <laughs> you know, I, I think when it comes to to digital uh, advertising, we have to look at our market. You mm -hmm. know, 
granted yet yeah, the majority of people are on facebook but i you know i have i have a better following i have more people following me on linkedin i think i have i don't know eight or ten thousand people mm -hmm. the problem is there's the engagement on linkedin is so poor compared to facebook where you get immediate gratification when someone says i like it or i'm commenting or i'm doing this right but technically maybe that's not your market right exactly so exactly. you know I, and i i've kind of run some of the numbers and and yes facebook when it could be if you're if you're comparing facebook twitter um linkedin and tiktok facebook is going to get you the best results um linkedin i think you're going to spend a lot of dollars just to get oh, yeah. one or two clicks you know you have to be approaching linkedin from the right uh direction or whatever you want to say uh it's different it's definitely more expensive to advertise on linkedin and but you can you can do things you can't do on facebook you can target people by you know job title uh role education level you can't do the same types facebook started bringing in a little bit of targeting based on a couple job titles mm -hmm. but it's really nothing and it's nothing compared to linkedin right. but you know their interface is a little clunkier and it's yeah. the whole the whole advertising experience is much different than facebook or you know, I, I know that a lot of people got scared when apple removed some of the parameters uh the tracking that that facebook was doing Oh, yeah. Uh, did that scare a lot of your clients or did you just work something up to kind of work <laughs> around it? Um, the ones that were aware of it were definitely scared. Mm -hmm. And then the others that weren't aware, you know, I had to inform and scare them then. So that was <laughs> dealt with a lot of uncertainty. And there wasn't a lot, a whole lot I could say because no one knew how it was going to impact things. Right. I can say that it has had far less of an impact than we worried about in, in this worst case scenario. So it's been, um, you just learn to target differently. You you don't rely as much on outside information. You go try to keep them on the platform more. And Facebook, if you've noticed, is very sneaky about this, but I love it. If When you click on somebody's ad in their website, the link opens within the Facebook interface. It's your it's that website, but it's within the Facebook interface. So what I'm thinking is, since it's still within Facebook, they're still tracking. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought that was kind of a genius workaround. I mean, because I like good ads. I don't mind being served ads. I especially, I mean, I've bought so much stuff off of Instagram. <laughs> so I, I like good ads and right. I like ads that are tailored to me. So I always say, yes, go ahead and track me. I don't have an issue with it because I'd rather that than get some ad for a hair loss product or, you know, whatever. Right. I mean, and, and sometimes I'll go through and, and I'm like, that ad doesn't even pertain to me. And I'll go in yeah. and click it. It's irrelevant. I don't want to see it again. Mm -hmm. And then I'm flooded with a bunch of stuff. That I'm like, I'm a guy. What What is this lingerie stuff? This stuff is yeah. And, and it's like, like you said earlier, they're 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 putting it out there just to see. I, I think maybe they're building an audience, building mm -hmm. some type of so that that they they they're showing this ad to people, and they're building this audience, and then they can retarget them later. Mm -hmm. um, but th I think that's that's why I like Google a little bit differently. It's is that the retargeting is is I can't say simplified, but it's more effective when it comes to because you're getting the kind kind of the client clients that you really want looking at your yeah. stuff uh, instead of just everybody, you know, hopefully, Hey, Oh yeah, I'm on Facebook. You know what? I'm just going to click this ad. I know it doesn't really pertain to me. I want to see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't like that. Oh, don't like that just, and then you get served those same ads over and over. Well, the retargeting on Facebook is a crack up because when we were getting ready to go on vacation, we were researching different uh, resorts and stuff. And so even now I'm still getting ads for all that. I'm like, I'm over my vacation. I'm I'm overseeing these ads, but they're still retargeting. So that kind of gives me a clue. Think about how long your retargeting window should be. Right. Well, you know, just, just for an example, I, I bought some uh, Under Armour uh, sneakers. Uh-huh. And now all I see in my feed is sneakers, 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 sneakers. 
And it's like, okay, I, I don't even like Nikes, but I'm getting served Nike ads. And then Cabela serves me, you know, other sneakers. <laughs> and I'm like, so all my feed right now is, is sneakers and, and some type of, of uh, shoe for outdoors. And, and so if you want to really trick the system, <laughs> just start clicking on stuff that you really like. And, and that's all it'll serve. Well, you know, with Facebook, the interesting thing is, is, Interest targeting was a really, and still is a really big thing for people. And, but you can target an interest like Nike, for example, mm -hmm. target people interested in Nike. Well, those people may hate Nike. Mm -hmm. The only reason why they've ever mentioned Nike is to say how much they suck. <laughs> and, you know, and, but they're still going to get served now. And there's no right. like that negative keyword kind of stuff on Facebook. Right. So it, it, you're right. It's not as precise and you do um, get a lot of wasted clicks. Let's talk about TikTok. I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I I went on it today, this morning, and all I got served was a bunch of girls. I don't know what they were doing, but it's like, okay, this is not even really what I want to watch. You know, so it, it, I think the algorithm on TikTok is way wonky. Oh, yeah, I agree 100%. And, you know, I... I am on TikTok mostly just for clients for advertising. Yeah. So I joined TikTok originally because my youngest was on TikTok and I wanted to be able to make sure that, you know, kind of not spy on them, but make sure things are on the up and up and whatever. And so then when clients started wanting to be on TikTok, I thought, man, I really need to know more about this platform with the, the intricacies because you can't advertise if you don't understand where you're right. putting your money. So, um, like Facebook, I have a love-hate relationship with TikTok because I don't get a lot of the content. Uh, and Instagram has reels. Yeah. And a lot of that is recycled TikTok material. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I end up watching reels more and the algorithm serves me stuff because the algorithm is more advanced than TikTok. Well, you so, know, that's, that's, you know, that's, I think the, it's, that's the only aspect of TikTok that I like is that I can take one video, put it on TikTok, press the button, it goes to Instagram, it goes to, you know, everywhere I want it to go. Yeah. But I try to upload that video to Facebook and it doesn't give me the option to take it anywhere else. Facebook wants their content on Facebook, nowhere else. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That's why, you know, when you click on sites, now they pop up within the Facebook interface. They're just, they're keeping you from leaving. Yeah. And, you know, I, I don't mind that as a marketer. I don't mind that because I, I want those people and I want the data and I want to be able to serve good ads for my clients. Um, you know, as a consumer though, it's, you know, it doesn't bother me that you don't go off of Facebook, but I just tend not to be on Facebook socially for right. personal because it has, well, once the political season is really in full swing, that's just going to be horrible. Right. And and then the conversations around it are horrible too. So, yeah. Oh, I think Facebook is good with hostage marketing. And, you know, they, they keep you, they keep you captured <laughs> in that environment. <laughs> And whereas the other ones, they allow you to go wherever and and they're not going to complain too much. But Facebook is, yeah, they, they, they want to control everything. And, and yeah. I think that's the aspect I don't like. Yeah. Well, and they're, and they're doing that with advertising, too. They're getting to the point. They have, in fact, they have a new ad product called Advantage Plus Shopping. And they tell you which of your prior ads to use. You don't even pick targeting. You simply pick uh they give you a selection of your own ads to choose from and you put a destination in and that's it you're they run everything and scarily enough they kind of work mm. I, i've actually seen good results with them and i thought wow the, the robots have taken over and in five years i will have no job <laughs> you know well one of the things that uh you know I, i'm i'm battling right now with google is that my own team does all the google stuff right? uh -huh. and, and they're certified they got all their google certifications right and every day i get an email from some google rep hey we can help you we can do this faster we've noticed some errors we can and all they want to do is extract more money and all i want to do is help my clients save more money exactly so we're reducing our clients costs we're reducing their, their cost per click we're doing 
We're doing everything we can to get more traffic for less dollars. And Google's like, no, 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 we want more money. Oh, always. And and always. I'm getting this email. My client's getting the email. They're contacting me and going, Rob, what the hell? <laughs> well, yeah, especially if, if Google's saying, well, it can be done better. That's, uh, I mean, that's the worst thing. Facebook does the same thing. They yeah. do the same thing. They get on and say, oh, let's have a call. You get on a call and Facebook proceeds to go through everything that they see is wrong with the campaign. Well, guess what? not you know best practices on facebook are not always what facebook wants to dictate right. and so a lot of times you do things different based on experience and then you get the rep in there telling your client well it should be done this way and it's very annoying yeah i mean so you and i have been in this space for a long time and, and i yeah. kind of got into this space because i had a previous company and, and and everything that that i was doing wrong there i learned and then as i started you know and then i sold that business and started helping my clients uh, this is what I do now. So, but how did you get into it? Um, I, I started out out of, you know, I graduated college in as a finance major, but then I was introduced to the World Wide web. <laughs> and, um, I mean, literally that long ago before email was even a thing. And I loved it. I immediately thought, wow, this is amazing. And so I started creating websites for myself and putting products on there. So when Google opened up click pay-per-click advertising, I hopped on that right away. Loved it, did it for a long time, then had uh, my sixth baby and decided, hey, I need to be at home a little bit more. So I kind of, I dropped out of everything for a couple of years. And then um, I hate to admit it, but I just, I got bored. I got bored and I needed to go back and do something to stimulate my brain a little bit. And Facebook had started social media advertising mm -hmm. and I just loved it from the get go. I, I loved Facebook in the beginning. It's it's my, yeah. my love hate relationship is with Facebook. The hate part is more recent than um, <laughs> in the beginning. In the beginning, I really liked it, but I love the advertising. I still love the advertising, mm -hmm. but I got on to advertise my own business. And that business was a site where um, you could put all of your social links in one place and then connect it by QR code. And right. there you have it. And that didn't work out, but I learned a lot about yeah. Facebook marketing, what yeah, not to I, do. You know, I, I just made a video the other day about the QR codes, and I've never been a big fan of QR codes. I mean, they've been around for a long, long time. Yeah. And I've never been a fan of business cards or that that third party link tree thing that I think you were just probably talking about. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I just create an about page for my clients. I put all their social stuff on there. I do this, do this add videos, testimonies, reviews, whatever, and then create their QR code and they can put it on their lock screen on their phone. I have mine right here. So yeah. when I go to a, when I go to events, people just scan my lock screen. And yeah. It comes up on my website, takes them wherever I want. And and the thing is you can have all kinds of stuff in that and but you control it. You mm -hmm. don't pay you don't pay that third party LinkedIn or that that link tree. Right. And and, and your QR code no longer works. And yep. um, so, you know, no, that's a smart way to handle it. That's the smart way to handle yeah. it. I think everything that you control has to be, you know, not say um, it's it, it should be your platform. I mean, we don't control Facebook. We don't control Google or Twitter, no. any of that. Well, if you're Elon Musk, you control Twitter, but he's the only one. Almost. Almost. Yeah, almost. He almost controls it. Right. I'm, I'm actually, I'm excited to see what happens with that because now people are interested in Twitter again. And for a while, they're like, gosh, I haven't done an ad on Twitter in probably three years. Yeah, I, no I, one I, wants to advertise I, on Twitter. I, I stopped. I, I, I have stuff being auto posted to Twitter, but I haven't engaged with anybody in years on Twitter because it's, it's too chaotic. Um, it is. It, it, it is. It's a fire hose of just everything. And it's it's hard to weed through. You know, you can search out hashtags, but that's useless because people put 20 hashtags that yeah. mean nothing. Yeah. And, and so let's talk about that. I mean, I, hashtags used to be huge mm -hmm. for years and then they dwindled and nobody was using them. And then they started coming back the last year or so. You know, and everybody's like, oh, you got to register your hashtag. You got to do this. You got to. I'm like, I still haven't done that. Um, to me, it's like I, I use one or two hashtags. That's it. Um, but there there are some marketing advantages to using hashtags. And, and the only one I really use is 
to see what my competitors are doing. Mm -hmm. No, it's, I mean, social media is great for competitive research. Mm -hmm. And as far as hashtags, I'm horrible. If you go to my Instagram account, I post on Instagram occasionally. You will never see a hashtag unless it's a sarcastic hashtag or just something that's really super stupid. Mm -hmm. And so I use hashtags for fun, not, not for any specific purpose. Um, for clients, I handle it a little bit different, but since I don't do I don't do organic social. Mm -hmm. I don't really worry about hashtags because you don't use them in advertising. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, uh, it's weird. I mean, and I, and I know that that Instagram is part of the Facebook and, and so is WhatsApp. Have you done anything with WhatsApp? I used to use WhatsApp. I haven't done any advertising to WhatsApp or on WhatsApp. Um, and I don't really use it because I find that I have plenty of other messaging options, right. but I can see we're in the international community. It's really important and yeah, a resource. I don't have any U.S. clients using WhatsApp. I have clients in Canada, Norway, UK, yeah. you know, everybody in Europe and Mexico. But rarely does anybody say, hey, Rob, I'm in the U.S. So it's WhatsApp. They just, it, I, I just not, I don't think it's big here. You know, it's. It's funny you mentioned that because I got a message on LinkedIn yesterday or so, and somebody's like, blah, 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 blah. We need help with advertising, blah, blah. Can you contact our chief marketing officer, or whatever, on WhatsApp at this? And I was like, no, but I have email. <laughs> but I was I was wondering, is that a thing now? You know, internationally, is that an accepted practice? You send people to your WhatsApp rather than email? Or was it just some sort of a, a scam and I'm just going to get suckered in? Uh, you know, when I get those types of things, I, I think it's a scam because, um, yeah, I, <laughs> I never communicate with somebody what's up, what's up. I have them communicate with me first, mm -hmm. um, because I, you know, I just, I get so many scams nowadays. It's like, okay, yeah, yeah just email it's a me shame. Yeah. yeah, or I'll say, go to my website, fill out the form. And they're like, no, we're just talking right now. Why don't you just take the information? Fill out the form. <laughs> you know, well then you do weed out the people that are just looky loose yeah yeah and um so but let's you know we're going to talk about looky loose because you know i think you get most of your looky loose when it comes to price shopping to to what shopping price shopping oh mm -hmm. yes you know they're, they're they're really cheap they they want a lot of stuff for a very little bit amount of money you know and there are certain industries that, that have trained their people to say, you know, I, I can only spend X amount. That is my budget. And and I'm like, really, where'd you come up with this? Because, you know, 300 hours is not going to get you nothing. <laughs> no, no, you it's know? not. And, and uh, you know, I, I find that in, in certain real estate offices, they're very, very cheap on certain things. And, and I'm not saying that's that, you know, realtors in, in question are like that. It's just, Certain offices, they they say, look, this is the limit that we're placing on certain things. And I'm thinking, yeah, but that limit was like 10 years ago. Why are you still right. sticking with it? Can't right. afford it. Well, it, it's hard thing. You know, we talked about my website and I do have pricing on my website because I just, I, I don't like, it's like when you go and you, you see a house ad for, an advertisement that you think, oh, that's a gorgeous house. And they don't put the price. Like, you don't even know if it's within your price range. And so that's the way I kind of approach things on my website. Um, I don't think I have the right approach. I think it's probably better not to have the price on there for the reasons that we discussed earlier. You were spot on. And it's, you know, it's it's really hard. It's really hard to make that that choice between pricing or no pricing. Well, and, and you know, I think one of the things that, 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 uh, price shoppers do is they hold on to that price. Mm -hmm. So if they see a price on a website and then they'll come back two years later and say, yeah, but your price on your, you used to have a price on your website. Maybe it was, you know, 2,500 bucks. I, I want that price. I'm like, yeah, but my price has gone up like six times since then. Yeah. 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 yeah that's another mistake I make. I just don't raise my prices very often. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you should. Guess I prices know. Are so high. I know. And, and I think that that right there is, is one of the uh, hardest things that we as entrepreneurs have to understand is that, you know, expenses are going up everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yes. But yeah. people look at us and say, well, you work from your home or you work from, you know, you can work from anywhere with a laptop. 
you don't have the expenses that everybody else does. And 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 you know, digital marketing that 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 can't be that expensive. Come on, give it to me cheaper. And you're like looking at him going, you know, dude, I have the same expenses or more than you do. <laughs> yeah. You just have all the digital expenses added on. Yeah. Well, what's funny is when people think, and I see this a lot with Facebook, um, they think, oh, well, I'm on Facebook. I can run ads. And just because, and so they don't value the service all that much until they attempt to do it. Mm -hmm. And then they don't get the results. And then they say, oh, Facebook ads don't work. It's like, right. no, they do work. You just need to know what you're doing. And that just takes time and experience. Yeah. What? What is what is the average time though that people can accept that their ads are starting to work for them? You know, because I, I've I've tried before, and, and I think maybe because you know we were using the wrong approach years ago, and things didn't work out, and I I didn't give it time. Mm -hmm. But I know with Google Ads, I can start usually, you know, getting results within the first month or so. Right. Well, it's it's very much the same with Facebook, but it also depends a little bit what kind of, um, you know, do you have an email list? Do you have any sort of following on your Facebook page or any engagement? Are you doing anything organically that can be support the paid efforts? Mm -hmm. And so it really depends on where they are as a company. Are they established, not established? But you can start seeing results on Facebook. You know, the same day you put up an ad, you can get a, a sale. It, you know, it happens, mm -hmm. um, but, but that's only usually for clients that are already pretty well established or they already have name recognition. If you're trying to build up an audience from scratch, it's going to take you a month or two to start right. getting your name out there. You know, one of the things that, that, uh, I always look at, you know, when, when I take on a new client, you know, what, what is their, their demographic, what is their, their client base or what is their numbers on Facebook? And if I see that they haven't engaged with people in a long time, mm -hmm. you know, they, they have thousands of followers, but no engagement. And I'm thinking, okay, what's going on here? Why did you stop? Or if you just posted something, why aren't you getting the engagement? So I have to look at, at their audience. Right. And then I discover that maybe they bought followers. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. you know, like, okay, now, where did those followers come from? Because if they didn't come from your local area, they probably came from some area in Mozambique that has, you know, hundreds of thousands of, of, of wrong, you know, non English people. speakers. <laughs> yeah, not, and, and you so, and, and, or the accounts are dead. I mean, the, the, cause a lot of these, 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 uh, fan farmhouses. Yeah. They use, they use computers and create all these different fake, um, profiles. Mm -hmm. And then they use them to follow people. And so, yeah, it, it's just, I, I have to go through and then and I, I explain to the people, what happened? What did you do? And, oh, we bought fans. Why? Well, yeah. there's a lot of pressure of like, I'd say five years ago, um, probably was the peak, but there was a lot of pressure that you had to have that social proof. And this only form of social proof was large numbers. Right. And, you know, that every, I'd say everybody fell into that trap thinking that that it, Facebook and social media in general have evolved and they've matured a bit and grown. So I think that people also, users are realizing, okay, the big numbers aren't as important anymore, mm -hmm. but there was a time when they were. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, and then I'm, I'm not a big fan of, of forcing videos to go viral. Um, you know, I'm a big, big proponent of, of, Sometimes less is more. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I, I, if, if a video that I put out or an ad that I put out, you know, gets one or two clicks and it makes a sale and it pays for the ad itself. Right. Great. Right. But if the video goes viral and you get nothing from it except, you know, praise from. Accolades. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, you can't take it to the bank. Mm -mm. You know, but, oh, well, I went viral. Okay. Well, did you get a new car out of it? Did exactly. You make, did you make your mortgage payment? Uh, yes. No. <laughs> and yeah. it's worthless. Yeah. Well, and that's that's kind of the the issue I have with TikTok is that not only is it really hard to target on TikTok, but the content has to be so unique to TikTok, and most brands 
just don't have that kind of content. So that's, that's the biggest challenge with TikTok for me. Yeah. Um, I, I think one of the, the, the big things for me is, is, um, uh, brand, di brand dilution, you know, you, 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 you act a certain way on Facebook or LinkedIn, then you get on TikTok and you're dancing and pointing and doing this. And people are like, but that's not the person I know. Right. You have, you have to be consistent with your brand voice. Yeah. And, um, and, and that's part of what makes TikTok so hard is because it is the pointing and the dancing and the being goofy that gets the attention. Yeah. And most people aren't going to TikTok for the same type of content that they would maybe go to YouTube for or Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I noticed that lately though, the, even all the algorithms on, on Instagram are, are crazy. Uh, I'm not getting served ads on Instagram like I am everywhere else. Um, but it is there. And um, I think people should be aware of it. Um, and, and I've heard that Instagram is, is a little cheaper. But yeah. you know, I, I don't know the the, uh, the the results. Well, Instagram really is just an extension of Facebook advertising because it's simply another placement. Like you can you have ads and they can show up in your newsfeed or they can show up in your messages or mm -hmm. ads can show up in a variety of different places. And Instagram is just another placement. So um, the cost, Instagram can be you know, maybe getting a click off Instagram might be a little cheaper than getting a click off of Facebook, but oftentimes it's a little more expensive, but it's a better click, a better quality click. Mm -hmm. So it just really, it, it depends. It depends on where it is. But in general, TikTok, I would say is the cheapest traffic you can get. They're just the, the cost per thousand is just a few bucks. And LinkedIn is the most expensive Facebook falls somewhere in between and each platform is so incredibly different and you just, your audiences are different on each platform. But for me, I think TikTok right now is the low hanging fruit. Yeah. It's, it's the, you're, you're, you're not going to spend as much money on TikTok, but you're not going to get the quality of, of client that you really want. Exactly. LinkedIn is the most expensive, but you're also going to get entrepreneurs and movers and shakers and upper management executives. Yeah. And then Facebook and Instagram in the middle, which, you know, it, it is going to help, you know, capture what you want. Um, but I've noticed though a lot of people just they advertise for brand awareness. And unless you're Coca-Cola, unless you're, you know, uh, big companies with with deep pockets, you're never going to build that brand awareness. So you really have to build up your own personality and, and get people to know you like and trust you. And right. Well, I think, I think one mistake people make with advertising is they go after the cheap clicks and they want to get the cheap traffic and lots of traffic to their website. And then, then they take that traffic from their website and they retarget it thinking, oh, these people have been to my website. No, all they're doing is retargeting cheap clickers mm -hmm. and they're not getting the results. And so sometimes that's a little frustrating with dealing with clients when you're trying to educate them on why you don't necessarily want the cheapest click out there. And because that's going to go into your pipeline and then you're going to have garbage forever. So <laughs> cheap clickers. <laughs> cheap clickers. <laughs> so how do people find you? Where do they go? Um, normally either my website or a friend tells them about me on Facebook. So, um, Kim-Reynolds.com is usually go. the best place to go. And, and, and the thing is, off air, we were talking about we were talking about our websites. We were talking about you know various social stuff, and and you know a lot of the the clients who come to us, both myself and Kim, and are strictly from referrals. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we have these this these digital assets that are out there that people can go to and learn more about us, but the types of clients that we really get that we really love to pay attention to and, and value all come from referrals. Exactly. And, and so, yes, we want to be able to get new clients. We spend money on new clients and, and that's what advertising does. But in the end, you know, it's, it's those referrals that are going to give us probably pay us more money or less hassle or not a pain in the ass, you know, and, and refer us to other people. 
Um, but granted, yes, yeah, starting out, we need to get some clients to build up that. And that's what the digital advertising does. It does. I agree 100%. And so this was, this was fun. This was great. We could talk forever. Uh, but it's true. <laughs> yeah, but we're limited on time. So I want to thank everybody for listening. And go over to uh, Kim's website. Learn more about her. It's kim-reynolds.com. And, and click around and uh, support her. So we'll talk to you guys Thank later. Thank you.